Hello everyone, this is Warhawk Beyond 2040 and welcome to another edition of the Flash Season 8 Review Series. And today I am going to be talking about Episode 8, The Fire Next Time, which I have just finished watching. And this episode was actually really good. I really enjoyed this one a lot. And in my opinion, I thought this was one of the better episodes of Season 8. And this episode more or less revisited an old storyline from season one, but just with different characters involved. And the storyline that they reused for this one was a man is framed for a murder that he didn't commit and he has a son and it's up to Barry to try and prove that he's innocent. Very similar to when Henry Allen was arrested for the murder of Barry's mum, which we learned that it wasn't actually him, it was actually the reverse Flash. So it's kind of like a throwback to season one, but just with different characters involved. And I really enjoyed it a lot. And we got to see a number of different flashbacks from season one, from the past. And the way they used those flashbacks and drafted it into this story was very well done and as i said this was one of the better episodes of season eight and also we don't exactly know who the main villain is going to be for season eight but it's giving us little clues that this person has the ability of fire and we'll get to that in a moment because i've got a rough idea who the villain could be but I could be wrong. It could be someone completely different. But as I said, this episode was very good. And it was kind of cool to see Barry Allen going out of his way, trying to prove uh, a man's innocence. Because, you know, we remember in season one, he was so frantic and determined to prove that his dad didn't kill his mum. Although this didn't happen like that in this episode, it was still kind of interesting to see Barry look at this guy and say, you know what, I lost my dad by him going to prison. I'm not going to let this happen to someone else and a child is going to lose their dad. I'm not going to let that happen again. So that was very cool dynamic and as I said, very enjoyable episode. So with that all said, let's get straight into it. Let's talk about episode eight, The Fire, next time. So this episode starts off at a bar where we see one of the employees locks up for the night and starts to leave. We see he is attacked and menaced by an unseen force and we see a bar stall is inexplicably so hot it burns him and we see the jukebox starts playing and then liquid starts to boil before the employee is attacked by something that appears to be smoke or steam that fills the room. And we hear him screaming and that's all we see. And then the next day we see Barry and Iris at home and she suggests dinner plans and then realises it's a significant day for him. Though he tries to brush it off that it's just another day. We learn that it's Henry Allen's birthday today and it's also around the time that he was arrested. At the bar we see Barry and Chester investigate the murder of the bar manager Stanley and it confirms that it's a metahuman attack but a very unusual one. Barry shows the worker who found Stanley a picture of Jacko Birch aka the hotness and she confirms that's the person she saw arguing with Stanley earlier in the evening. Meanwhile at the citizen Iris tasks Allegra with a specific profile sign that Allegra had previously dismissed but one of Allegra's staff, Taylor, had gone behind her back to suggest it to Iris. Iris agreed and then tells Allegra she needs to interview the subject, a local influencer of the employee who went behind her back. We also see in Central City, Jacko, who is now a roadie for a band, tries to impress his son but fails to do so. The police show up to arrest him for murder and when the police try to remove his son from the scene, Jacko starts to light up and upset that he could be losing his son again and pleased with a flash that he didn't do anything wrong. Just at this moment, he was about to set the police on fire. We also see Barry has flashbacks to the night his own dad was arrested for the murder of his mum, which turned out not to be true, obviously. And then in Cecile's office, Barry gets advice from her and is very unsure that Jacko did commit the crime. 
There's no hard evidence that Jacko committed the crime and Barry still isn't convinced. He thinks something is wrong and asks Seal to meet with him to read his emotions, but she says she can't cross that ethical line. Fair enough. Allegra and Taylor interview the influence of Rosie and Allegra is very much not into it and resentful of just being there. She soon leaves the table to speak with a jitters employee she knew in prison. However, the employee, Lydia, is resentful of Allegra's success while she has been struggling with low pay, minimal jobs. No one will hire Lydia because of her criminal record and Allegra says she wants to help her by sharing her story with the world. Meanwhile at prison, Cecile meets with Jack who is very worried about his son and he explains that he got his life together and got out of prison for good behaviour. He explains that he fought with Stanley because Stanley stiffed him half the purchase on a guitar he was selling so he could buy his son's tickets to the concert. He says he went home after the argument and insists he did not kill Stanley. Cecile later tells that Jacko doesn't have much for a defence but her gut tells her that he believes he is innocent. Moments later they're informed that Jacko has escaped custody and Barry immediately goes to confront the witness. Team Flash are also on sure that Jacko is incident innocent and tries to sway Barry that escaping jail doesn't look good for him. They hit a hit for a fire outside the bar and Flash and Killer Frost head there. They find the witness burned to a char of ash, Ugh. but Frost notes that the fire doesn't respond to her coal powers. At the Citizen, Allegra is excited about her story, but her employee is annoyed. Barry gets some of the reports from the scene of the second murder and says that it is identical to evidence from the first murder and it doesn't line up with Jacko as they are too exact and can't be replicated. For Barry, this case is personal because of what happened to his dad surrounding the murder of his mother when he was a kid. Joe pays Barry a visit at his police lab. The team is worried about Barry and Joe says he's not okay. It happens to be Henry Allen's birthday. Barry tells Joe that the hotness had the same look in his eye that his father did the night he was arrested for a murder he didn't commit and believes that the hotness didn't kill anyone. Joe says that maybe Barry's seen things that others can't because of what he went through and tells him not to give up on it just yet. Just then, Barry gets a message that Chester found something. At the Citizen, Allegra gives Iris her story and she likes the story, but she's not happy Allegra wrote something other than the Rosie story. Because Allegra didn't help Taylor with the Rosie story, Taylor's story isn't that great. Iris tells Allegra she's trying to teach her how to be a supervisor and mentor and Allegra didn't do that. She tells Allegra that she has to fix things with Taylor. At Star Labs, Chester and Frost tell Barry he was right. The fire from the crimes are cold fusion, and therefore Jacko is innocent because his powers are very different. Now it's a race against time to clear his name before he does something stupid. So we see Jacko confronts the transport taking his son to foster care again, and Harold confronts his dad and Jacko agrees with his son. He is a loser and all he wanted to do was get his life together. He says that he no longer cares what happens because they will always think he's a killer. Flash shows up and stops him from doing something stupid and tells him they found in evidence proving his innocence but he has to stop so no one can get hurt. While they're standing there the ground starts to shake it turns out Jacko's powers are connected to the earth below wherever he's standing and he's causing a freak volcano. The Flash has very limited time to stop it and Jacko will have to use his abilities to absorb the heat after the Flash gives him a pep talk. The two of them work together as Flash goes underground to release the pressure by getting the water table into the magma and Jacko absorbs the heat. The day is saved and thanks to Jacko's heroic act impresses his son and ultimately wins him over. Nice. Jacko gets full custody of his son, so he and his son get a second chance. Allegra goes to talk to Taylor, who is snide and annoyed at what Allegra did. Taylor insults Allegra for her prison experience and then tells Allegra that she plans to destroy her. Yeah, I didn't really care for these scenes. If we had cut out the um, citizen scenes with Iris and Allegra, I think this episode would have been even more higher, but this was still very very good in my opinion at the west house everyone reminisces about henry allen in honor of his birthday and as the episode is starting to be brought to a close we see team flash tries to figure out who the real killer is and they use the data to try and find more victims just in case they're dealing with a metahuman serial killer and that's how we end 
episode eight and that wraps up my review aside from the iris and allegra citizen scenes this episode was actually really good i quite enjoyed this one a lot and as i said before this was one of the better episodes of season eight and i'm really looking forward to seeing how this is going to progress and who the main villain could be i think the main villain this person who's going around turning people into ash with the ability of fire i think it could be ronnie aka firestorm now a lot of you are thinking well hang on a minute didn't ronnie die after sacrificing himself true that was before but thanks to crisis and now all of the earths are in one singular form one universe there is a possibility that we could see a ronnie going around vaporizing people with his fire ability how many other villains or how many other people for that matter do you know have the power of heat except maybe heat wave but heat wave uses more of a flamethrower he doesn't actually have special fire powers so i think it could possibly be firestorm aka ronnie but a more evil version but time will tell really but overall i thought this was a very good episode and i like the way that they used an old storyline from season one but just switched it around a bit but this time barry is trying to prove the innocence of another person very well done so that's going to be it for me i am going to wrap this up now what was your thoughts on episode eight did you enjoy it what did you think of Barry trying to prove the innocence of another person being framed for murder? Did you enjoy it? And did you like the way that they used flashbacks from season one into this story? And also, who do you think this meta serial killer could be? Is it possible it could be Ronnie, aka Firestorm? Or do you think it's someone we haven't seen before? You know what to do, guys. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, leave your thoughts and comments down below. And I will see all of you next time for another edition of the Flash Season 8 review series, where I am going to be talking about Episode 9, which I am very much looking forward to seeing and talking about, especially with the way this whole episode played out and with the way this one ended. Should be a good one. And let's just wait and see what happens. So until next time, Take care, everybody, and stay safe. And once again, as always, much appreciated. Thanks for listening.